This is a very difficult idea to accept and to understand what I'm about to share, but let's try. You've always been creating your reality and choosing your state of being every second of your existence here. Every experience I've had from the beginning of my life as this person was allowed, created, and invited by me on a certain level of my being. Most of us can understand this mentally right away, but to really understand what I'm saying, you'll know because the implications of this fact will feel like a shockwave through your body. Today, let's talk about the idea of training your frequency. This is maybe an angle we haven't talked about here yet or in this way, but it's the same thing we've been talking about just in a, in a different perspective. So let's begin by saying this, this is a very difficult idea to accept and to understand what I'm about to share, but let's try. Let's see if, if this idea can sink in for you. So we've said that you're the creator, you're a creator of your reality, who's always creating. And so you better get used to the idea. What this means is that every single moment of your life, even long before you understood any of these truths, even when you were still living like a victim of your reality, you were nevertheless creating it. Even back then, right? You've always been creating your reality and choosing your state of being every second of your existence here. And so let's take a moment to let that sink in, if you can, that every experience I've had from the beginning of my life as this person was allowed, created, and invited by me and chosen by me on a certain level of my being. And this is difficult because we think, well, I would never choose to create abuse and suffering and victimness. What do you mean I chose those things? And so choose is kind of a difficult word to say because it's more like you've been willing to tolerate those experiences. And be whatever you're willing to tolerate is what you're continuing to allow into your experience. So it's more about becoming unwilling to tolerate negative frequencies and only willing to tolerate <clears throat> positive frequencies. And when I say tolerate, of course, I'm not implying any kind of resistance. I'm implying full empowered creatorship. You just practically speaking, choosing your experience. That's it. Choosing what state of being you want to access, what frequency you want to operate from is all we're saying. So when you understand this fact, which may take some time. Most of us can understand this mentally right away, but to really understand what I'm saying, you'll know when that understanding takes place because the implications of this fact will feel like a shockwave through your body because it means that you've been actively training your frequency like a well-trained dog to act in a certain way in every single life experience you have. I'm going to say that again. It means you have been training your frequency to operate on a certain level in every experience, like a well-trained dog would be trained to behave, right? To commandments and whatnot. Your, your mind, your, your energy is literally your slave. It does whatever you say. It goes wherever you direct it to go. So the problem is not that you don't have the power to create. The problem is you don't have the responsibility to create correctly. You don't have the understanding of how you tell your energy what to do. Does that make sense? So you need to gain the awareness of how you're directing your energy and frequency and attention. And then once you know how it works, mechanically speaking, then it just becomes about taking responsibility. You know, everyone is fully and completely responsible for their happiness or their misery. And that's tough to accept. Because people say, well, come on, Aaron, all these bad things have happened. 
they've been abused, they've had this experience, they've had that experience. How can you possibly say that they're fully responsible for their unhappiness? And again, I'm saying they're responsible for what they're still choosing to tolerate in their quality of consciousness. Meaning when you just no longer want to be a victim, you just refuse to ever take a victim position. Even if you get mugged in a back alley, you know, and get your wallet stolen or something and you get beat up a little bit, you come out of that experience saying, all right, I attracted that somehow. Let's figure out how. And you don't go into a story. You don't run home to tell everyone, oh, listen to me. I was beat up today. I was mugged. I was so scared for my life. Once you're sick and tired of being a victim, you will never demote your quality of consciousness to that level. You'll take almost delusional empowerment in any situation, even getting mugged and getting robbed, right? Think about Jesus ready to go to the cross and Pontius Pilate says, don't you know I have the power over you to set you free or to send you to the cross? And Jesus says, you would have no power over me, bro, that my father didn't give you. And then he says, no one takes my life from me. I lay it down freely. So you're, you're having this crowd outside these, the, the Jews, right? Chanting, crucify him, crucify him. And what is Jesus feeling in that moment? Oh my God, all these people want to crucify me. What did I ever do? I was just trying to help. Instead, Jesus says, ah, if they want my life, they can have it. I love giving. <laughs> It, no one can take my life from me. I lay it down of my own accord. I'm choosing to lay down my life because I'm the creator. They want this experience means life wants this experience. So something powerful must be about to happen. I give my life freely to this cause. And then Jesus becomes the most powerful figure who's ever lived. That's, that's how powerful surrender is, right? That's how powerful you accepting that your will is God's will and living in the flow of that will that's how powerful that is. So in that way, every experience you've ever had was qualified by you based upon the way you thought and felt about it. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm glad that's clicking. You've qualified all your energy in every unique experience, right? This is what we talk about here. Catalyst. Every experience is a catalyst which means that every experience is contacting a different part of your state of being, your, your awareness, your mind, all the energies you're holding inside your subtle body, the seven energy centers, all the different energies being held there, whether positive or negatively charged, are being poked at by your life experiences. Someone says a comment that you don't like and then it kind of triggers a bit of anger. You know, it's coming out all the time. Life is poking at your state of being and seeing what it can activate in you. And so once you're no longer willing to tolerate negative frequencies, you stop choosing them and you actively unchoose them. Does that make sense? So this is why we call the mind the subtle body <clears throat> because the subtle body is our energy body. And you know, we think about mind as being the brain, but your mind is not the brain. The brain is one part of your mind. Really your mind is your seven energy centers. That's where everything's happening mentally. And the brain is like the processing center for all the energies trickling up from the spine through the seven energies into the brain. And then the brain kind of condenses them into actions and behaviors and words, right? You're always acting out your state of being. You can't, you can't act out a state of being you're not in. We call that inauthenticity. And it's very easy to pick up when someone's in a, in a bad mood, holding repressing anger, let's say, or repressing frustration, and they're trying to put on a happy face and oh, everything's cool. And you're talking with them. You can pick up. You're like, Hey, what are you like? Why are you putting on that mask? You know, what's behind that? I can feel there's some passive aggressiveness coming out. Like you can only suppress an energy for so long before it explodes. And so when someone's trying to pretend like they're happy when they're unhappy, it's really obvious. Likewise, when someone's genuinely happy, it's really obvious. Energy never lies. Energy always tells the truth. So your mind is your energy. Yeah. And so because your energy is always acting out, 
your state of being, your frequency through the body, you always have this mirror of your state of being in the way you're acting, behaving, and speaking about reality. And I'll tell you what, when I first discovered this fact, let's say when I first understood this at a deep level, it was so paradigm shifting and so incredibly empowering that I, I began making huge leaps in my quality of consciousness in different experiences that had always been, let's say, difficult in the past. For example, social anxiety was always a big one for me. Um, I spent my whole seventh grade, almost all of my seventh grade year in middle school as a loner in junior high because um, I think I've told this story before, but I had really good friends in sixth grade. I was friends with all my classmates. We hung out, had lunch together every day. But at the beginning of seventh grade, some of them started to cuss and talk about porn or some of them started to smoke pot and stuff like that. And I was told that those were bad, right? So my heart was like, oh, I can't be friends with them or it's gonna be displeasing to God. <clears throat> and so I actively chose to disengage with those friendships and just be by myself, eat lunch by myself. Like I would usually hide in the bathroom stalls or something but I just didn't feel right about continuing in those friendships because I'd been conditioned that those things were wrong to talk about, to do, to partake in. So I was kind of like, oh no, my friends all became bad <laughs> in seventh grade and now I can't be friends anymore. And so that whole year being a loner in, in middle school, my friends started to be like, hey, Abke, why don't you hang out with us anymore, man? What, are you too cool for us? And I didn't know how to respond but um, started to get picked on more and more and had this trauma develop of being in social situations. Carried that all the way through my 20s, like parties, social gatherings. I would just contract so hard on the inside. I don't wanna be here. I don't like being around all these people. I feel judged. I feel unsafe in my body, whatever. <clears throat> and once I, in my late 20s, discovered this fact of, of choosing and creating your state of being based upon where you place your attention or where you revoke your attention, I started to feel very empowered that I could retrain and it, I didn't have these words for it back then of requalifying, but I kind of knew intuitively like I can train my mind, my energy to respond differently. And within very short periods of time, I started feeling very comfortable in big social gatherings where I didn't know anyone. And then I started to enjoy social gatherings. Um, I started to feel more and more comfortable teaching in person or, or speaking publicly. These things that were always very difficult for me. So it's like when you begin this inward journey towards self mastery, this is the first problem that you have to deal with is that you have trained your frequency to operate at a certain level for every life experience that you have. Literally every little unique experience you've qualified a different frequency to activate in that experience. And so that's why you always feel the same way around those same people, always tend to not like social gatherings or whatever it is. You've created a static frequency that you're not training or requalifying. And so it just keeps doing what it's been trained to do. Like a well-trained dog always knows to sit, roll, roll over, play dead, whatever. Your frequency is doing that, right? So here's a few examples. Think about how your state of being shifts when you are around your friends or your best friend. When you're around a rude person, when you're around your parents or your in-laws or your ex, or when you get a big bill in the mail. Think about how your state of being shifts when someone close to you betrays your trust. Think about how it shifts when someone tries to argue with you and tell you that you're wrong. Think about the way your energy shifts when you're with someone who's deeply suffering. When something expensive breaks, when you're at a large social gathering or when you're alone in meditation, don't you have different feeling states for all of these experiences? Don't they all provoke a unique reaction from you? So each of these experiences provokes a different frequency from you because that's what you've trained it to do in the past. So when you're living from victim consciousness, you know, you think that your reactions to life are just facts. 
right? It's just the way I feel about certain things. I just, I don't like that. I don't like this. I don't like that. Well, you just trained yourself not to like it. <laughs> You're a well-trained dog. However, think about the way when we're living from creator consciousness, we no longer feel that what happens to us and what, how, what re reaction comes out of us. We don't feel that that's a fact, that I'm a victim to that feeling anymore. We look within and say, oh wow, I didn't know that that negative energy was still in me. Time to requalify. Time to tell my energy what I want. I am the governing presence, yeah? I am the creator. So now we've begun to understand through these teachings that we at no time, for no reason, and in no situation are victims. But we are always, in every moment, at all times, in every situation, creators. And so we're trying to get used to that idea and start using that power we have as creators to our advantage rather than to our detriment. Because up to this point, we've been using our creatorship to our detriment, right? We've been creating negative states of being and training them and strengthening them and harnessing them. And so now we're trying to go in the reverse and unqualify those negative energies and qualify the energies of the heart, the energies of love. So, for example, when you feel triggered by somebody now, hopefully, you don't just go running right into the trigger and let it carry you off into a ferocious argument or whatever, like you always used to do. Hopefully now, when an, when an intense emotion is being felt, when you feel your state of being contract, you get very still inside. You get very quiet. Hmm, a lot of anger coming up right now. Let me just feel this anger and see what it's telling me. And then you listen to the anger and it's telling you how bad it wants some certain outcome it's not getting. And so you requalify that energy and say, what I want is not an outcome. What I want is peace of mind and command of my state of being in this moment. You requalified it. I affirm that I am at peace in this moment. I am at peace with what is. I revoke all anger towards the present moment. I revoke all resistance towards the present moment. And I invoke acceptance of the present moment. You know, there's a million ways you can requalify energy. It's not about what you say, it's about your intention and your sincerity. Intention and sincerity are far more powerful than technique and method. Technique and method are just means to help you know how to use your intention and sincerity. Bring your heart to it, right? So positive use of denial and affirmation of truth. What we deny, we're never saying, I deny this energy, anger, anxiety, stress, guilt, depression. We're never saying I deny this as a bad, unvalid energy. No, 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 no. It has, absolutely has its place. It's very important in the universe that these energies exist. But now we're stepping into our creatorship. We're evolving and we're ascending. So we get to use our free will to choose what states of being we want and are no longer a victim of our state of being like third density consciousness as in third density consciousness, moving into fourth density where we become the full commander at the helm. So we're just saying, I no longer have use for this and I now activate this instead. So as you gain mastery over certain situations in your life, you know, moment by moment, you'll notice that your frequency no longer drops when you're around that person or when that bill comes in the mail or when you get ready to speak in public. You know, your frequency has been trained to operate at a certain level now during that specific kind of situation. And that's how you gain mastery, moment by moment. What's coming up right now that needs to be mastered? If I'm about to go speak publicly and I notice any nervousness, which usually there's at least a little bit of it, I just lean into it and say, what does this energy want? What, what does this want here? And I notice it always wants the approval of the, of the crowd, the people I'm going to teach to. I need them to approve of what I'm about to say. And I go, ooh, wow, that's very selfish. Ah, I don't want any of that. I'm not interested in having them agree with me so I feel accepted. That's very selfish. I wanna serve these people. So if I trigger them by what I say, 
perfect. I love that. They needed to get triggered. If nobody resonates with the message for whatever reason, perfect, that needed to happen. I literally can't lose. And I walk myself through that requalification. And I'm, I'm figuring out that I really truly do want just to be of service. And it's not about me. It's about the message I'm being given to share. And then that feels very warm and heart-centered and much more interesting. And so I just choose that energy. And so I've gradually requalified that frequency. For example, when I was 29, I taught a meditation class in San Jose and I'd never really since being on stage leading worship in my you know, teenage years through early 20s, I had to talk a little bit, but I could hide behind the music. So I got kind of comfortable on stage, but like full on teaching I'd never done before in public. And I was asked to teach a meditation class and I was all enthusiastic. And then to literally to my shock, I get up there without having even thought about being nervous leading up to it. I'm sitting on this little platform thing facing about 20 people sitting on meditation cushions and I'm like almost shaking with nervousness and anxiety. I had no idea that this was in me to be this nervous. So I you know, didn't know how to handle it at that point. So I just scraped by and made it through. But then each week Sundays became a huge catalyst because I'm like, oh man, I get so nervous every time I go up there. And I was really getting into law of attraction teachings, Neville Goddard and stuff like that at that point in my life. And I was like, no, I don't have to feel this way. I can choose what reality to create. And so I started visualizing in meditation each day, me being up on stage, being in my most authentic self, being in the flow and just delivering the message as it authentically wants to be delivered, feeling no anxiety at all. And I would feel that experience and get excited about it and visualize it. And then I started to get a lot less nervous each week. And literally within like three or four weeks, I went from shaking with nervousness to fully comfortable being up there. And that's because I gave it my full attention. It wasn't just like a, oh, on Sundays, I think about trying to be less nervous. It was like, this is a huge problem. Red alert, red alert. We've got a huge bundle of negatively charged energy that we need to requalify. It's called anxiety. And so I would visualize it in meditation every day. And then all Sunday morning, I would get into that state of I'm here to serve. I'm not here for me. I do, I do nothing of my own accord. I'm only here to do what the father directs me to do. And I would feel more authentic in that energy. And it felt better to be in that energy. So within just a few weeks, I got over this crippling nervousness, right? Most people would take years to get over an energy like that. But once you know you're in command, you start doing it. Yeah, it, nothing becomes more interesting to you than this. So for example, if you're about to present at work and you get nervous when you present in public, then you can literally repeat to yourself, I am not nervous, I am confident and poised. Like in the moment, you can just requalify what's there in the moment. And then all throughout the week in meditation, you can go to that part of you that gets nervous to speak in public and you requalify it, requalify it. And you just feed your frequency what you want, the energy that you want. And you notice it starts operating on that level much, much faster. The more intentionality you bring, the faster it responds. So this is why practicing living from the heart, which is what we talked about last week. This is why practicing heart based consciousness, heart centered consciousness is so powerful because as you just practice staying mindful of your inner world and always anchoring yourself in the heart, right? In any situation that provokes a lower frequency to manifest, you simply bring yourself back to the heart, back to the heart, back to the heart. And you, you make sure that you always respond from that level. No matter what I feel, I allow what I feel. I accept what I feel, but I do not allow what I feel to act through me unless I will it. And so when I only want love to act through me, I will only open the doors of the conscious mind to let that energy act through me. And if anything less than love is trying to act through me, I keep quiet. I sit with it. I create space for it say, Hmm, we have an energy here that doesn't match the frequency I've chosen time to get to work. And that's the daily practice, right? You're training your frequency to operate at that level permanently in that particular experience. 
And so this is why the heart is the, the key to our creatorship. The heart is the foundation. The heart is your anchor and your center of power and your home base as the creator. If you're always in the heart, you cannot be a victim to any circumstance because the heart doesn't know victim consciousness, doesn't have any of that. So you're always able to choose how you want to respond. <clears throat> Even if you don't feel loving, you can still choose to respond from love anyways. And that's also how you requalify. See, there's many ways to do it. So if you're always in the heart, you're always able to choose is the point here. And this is when life gets really fun, really exciting and empowering. And you begin to feel yourself as the creator because you're proving it to yourself, right? More and more as you watch yourself requalify old energies and see the difference in your state of being in your quality of consciousness, you see your authenticity start to shine more. You feel more free. You feel more expansive in your body. Then you prove to yourself that you're the creator. And as you prove it to yourself, you gain a lot of momentum in this practice. So I am the I am consciousness itself, which is the governing presence over the mind at all times. Once we accept that fact, really accept it, understand it, doesn't it kind of put the onus on us to actually put it into action? Like, you know, once you know that the fruit you're buying from the store is full of toxins and glyphosate and DDT and toxic chemicals, once you really know that, like people have told you that, you're like, yeah, yeah, cool, whatever, you only live once, don't care. But then once you start doing some research and you find out how much those chemicals really affect your mood and your hormones and all this stuff, and you're really aware how much that apple has those toxins in it, then it puts an onus on you to not eat the apple and to start buying organic, right? These are just the decisions make themselves when we understand them. Does that make sense? And so when you understand this, it puts an onus on you to take full responsibility for your state of being and to always requalify energies you don't want to experience anymore. Some people want to experience victimhood, right? It, they think it feels good. They think it feels empowering. And so they choose it over and over. They look for every opportunity to make themselves a victim. And so we can't force somebody like that to be done with that experience. They want it, right? It would waste our own energy to try and help somebody who's not ready for our help and not asking for our help. Right? It just drains our energy. So we let them be where they are. But we are no longer interested in victimhood. So we take responsibility over that frequency in our energy field. So if you cannot get into the heart in any moment you need to, then you can't really choose your frequency yet. So first practice getting into the heart. Yeah, operating from the heart. We talked all about that last week, the four stages of getting into heart-based consciousness from the solar plexus to the heart center, that journey is a basically four steps, right? And so once you get into the heart, you have full power to choose your state of being because the heart is the true center of our free will. As an eternal spiritual being, the heart is where my will resides. So to gain this ability of shifting into the heart at any moment, we must practice it. Right, Patty, we must entrain that ability we must entrain that frequency. The heart is the foundation of all spiritual power, as we've said. So you have to practice using that power, using your heart. Practice coming from love and from acceptance in every possible moment. And I'm sure, as Selena and I did, you guys had ample opportunity to do that this week during Thanksgiving, being around lots of people, being around relatives who may not be as conscious or awake yet, may not be on a spiritual path yet consciously. And so you have this great mirror of the ego in front of you that provokes energies in you as they act those energies out. And so you're like being, you know, being around people becomes like a mind training practice all of a sudden. That when that starts happening, that's how you know you're stepping into the heart. You're stepping into your true free will which is to rule your mind and to be the master of your state of being. 
I rule my mind, which I alone must rule. That conviction appears in you at a certain point, and you stop boohooing poor me, and you start becoming a creator. So I'm gonna actually give you guys a visual picture of this in a little flowchart graph that I created. You guys know I love graphs. So here's the frequency spectrum of the energy centers. If you know the SQ chart, then you know that each of these seven levels is at a different frequency or literally rate of vibration. And so the lower the chakra is, the lower, denser, slower energy it is, and likewise, vice versa for the higher that the chakra is. So every, every level we go up, the frequency is higher at that level. So we have to reach, uh, frequentially speaking, to that higher state in order to train it and activate it. So you see the red down here is much slower frequency, and there's different qualities of consciousness that appear at these different levels of frequency. So at the root chakra level, 50 points or below on the SQ chart, you have energies like fear, guilt, and apathy that you access at these wavelengths. At the second level of the sacral chakra, 51 to 75 SQ, energies like anger, addiction, and self-devaluation are very prevalent. Between 76 to 100 SQ, energies like pride, control over others, insecurity, are prevalent at that level. At the level of the heart, 101 to 125, we begin accessing compassion, joy, and gratitude. From 126 to 150, at the illumination level, we begin to access real spiritual wisdom, true authenticity, and dispassion towards duality dispassion towards pleasure and pain. We become truly indifferent to life circumstances. We are always centered, balanced, and poised at that level. Then we go even higher to the level of mastery, 151 to 175. We experience stillness, bliss, and flow, or living from that non-doership state of consciousness, fully at one with life, not attempting to take any control whatsoever in even the slightest way but fully flowing, surfing the wave of life as an, as an extension of it. That's the level of mastery at the third eye. And then of course, the singularity level is full God consciousness. So can you see how if you're trying to live up here at the heart level, you're trying to always have compassion and joy and gratitude and happiness flow out of you effortlessly. Well then, you shouldn't spend too much time entertaining energies down here, should you? You shouldn't, you shouldn't allow energies of fear to just dominate through your mind without taking responsibility for them because then you're dropping your frequency to that level. You shouldn't allow addictions to run rampant if you wanna live from this level because you just keep pulling yourself back down to this frequency. So the more you're willing to tolerate these energies and allow them in your experience without requalifying them, the harder you make it to stay up here. So you may reach the heart, as we say, for fleeting moments. A joyous experience happens, a beautiful moment happens, but then you go right back into insecurity or you know, self-devaluation or whatever these normal egoic energies are for you. You revert back to those frequencies because you're still training them. You're still allowing them. You're still putting up with them and not requalifying them. So every experience you have will bring up one of these things, right? You'll, you'll see it eventually and usually very, very soon. You don't have to wait all that long before what's in there will get provoked, but it does get provoked on very subtle levels sometimes. So it's not so obvious, right? That anger is arising in this moment. Maybe you're not even, you haven't even admitted to yourself that you're angry inside yet. You know, it can, be, it can be very, very subtle to do work on these levels as well as explosive and right up at the surface. It can be anywhere in there, but I promise you, whatever negative energies are in there are spiraling around your frequency and coming out of you. And every time they do, you feel a little contraction in your state of being. So again, we have this perfect barometer, our emotional guidance system, which always tells us what frequencies are active in that moment so we can always have an option to requalify them. 
even if you're sitting alone in your house and you just notice you're not happy. Like maybe you're not in some horrible mood or something, but you're like, I just feel flat and disconnected. Requalify that. Yeah, why not? Why not always be happy? Because that's God's will for you. That's love's will for you, which means that is your will. You really do want to be happy at all times in all situations. So train your frequency to be happy in all situations. The more you entertain and interact with the lower energies, the more you train them and vice versa. And so if every time you're around, you know, your in-laws and you find yourself kind of rolling your eyes at those little agitating comments they always make, requalify that. You don't have to feel that way. You don't have to be annoyed by their behavior. You're not a victim in any situation in any way whatsoever. So in summary, take every situation as an opportunity to upgrade your frequency based upon what you choose or who you choose to be in that moment, how you choose to respond in that moment. That's your creatorship. I promise you, once you really start to do this, it becomes by far the most important thing in your life. Because firstly, you see that it directly affects everything in your life. As we teach here in 4D University, all things exist in relationship. You're always in relationship to everything. And so who you are in any moment will determine what relationship you're taking. So if you want to be a better mother or father to your children, this becomes the most important thing in your life. If you want to be a better partner to your spouse, this becomes the most important thing in your life. If you want to ex accelerate your career and get a promotion or get a better job, this becomes the most important thing in your life. Because based on what energies you're willing to tolerate reflects the experiences that come into your life. If you're willing to tolerate victimhood, some experience that would provoke that energy will continue to be drawn to you. Yes. So this becomes the most positively addicting and rewarding activity that you can ever do. Even when it doesn't feel great, you still want to do it even more so actually, because you begin to look for every opportunity to upgrade your frequency in every moment. When you feel your state of being contract, you should feel like Superman, you know, opening his white button shirt, revealing the S logo, except yours, your logo says I am. <laughs> you should feel yourself being called into action when your frequency constricts or drops or lowers. You should feel the creator coming out of you to say, ah, time to create. You know what I mean? It, this is an exciting thing to do. It's not like, oh, bummer, I got to requalify this, man. Well, this is so much work. It's not work because you're always doing it. <laughs> you're doing it whether you know you're doing it or not. So creating positively can become just as effortless and automatic as creating negatively as that once was, right? You just haven't trained that yet. So as soon as you feel the presence of a lower frequency, which you've trained in your past, you should say time to requalify this energy time to create my chosen state of being. This is a reflection and a remnant of my victim creation from the past. This is a reflection of my insecurity that I created in the past. So I'm very, very thankful it's coming up to be recreated and requalified. Even in the experience of requalifying, don't feel like a victim. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't feel like, oh, I gotta requalify this insecurity. Oh, how long is this gonna take? I hope this like happens quickly. Like, don't go into that attitude either. It's fun, it's exciting, it's empowering to requalify your energy, to refine yourself like, you know, a sculptor refines its, its art or, you know, like um, a potter refines its pottery. You're shaping yourself into the perfect, most authentic, brilliant expression of the divine being that you are. 